approach than Roberto Giannito's uh, hand. He's the head of Fiat Design and he's the leader of the team that created the Cinquecento, 500, and many other successful products. My name is Fabrizio Vacca, I'm an interior designer working in Torino, and I took part in this project evolution from the initial design research to the final production. It's my first time here in USA, so I hope <laughs> you will apologize if my English is not that good and I will make some mistakes, but you know, we say "abbia pazienza, have patience. Like, <laughs> so, so our team is, is a group of designers that keep the continu continuity with uh, Fiat brand's tradition but tries to push itself towards the future for every product. We are often asked, what is the main feature that all the Fiat cars have in common? What is, how can you tell that is a Fiat? I think it's just in the way designers have approached each model, trying to give uh, revolutionary characteristics to it. We have some examples here. That is the, that is the Fiat Topolino that was the first uh, compact mass production car. It had, like, there's a funny story about this one because uh, the, the idea was to give a motor to a whole nation and it was actually the first real Cinquecento. The, the name of this one, Cinquecento, it had to cost no more than five times a normal worker's wage. And so they did it, and it was so cute and small related to other cars of that time, it was the 34, that people started calling it Topolino, that means Mickey Mouse. But, yeah, I know in English Mickey Mouse has a negative, <laughs> but it was not because of that. Yeah, it was. And then the Germans liked the, the concept and they copied it. Sometimes it happens, but <laughs> don't write it down, please. And they, they did a, a video. Then we have the Giardiniera, the 600 Multipla, the 600 Multipla. It was the first car that could fit uh, six people in three rows in a very small size. It had a, like a, a working vehicle size. So, trying to find out the best solution out of a given footprint is what we call architectural wheels. To do that, also with 500 we started designing it from the interior to the exterior. But what is the interior of a car? Inside a car is where we live, where we drive, where we experience, where we spend a huge amount of our, our life, of our life, of our time. That's why we started doing researches about people's habits, behaviors, and we found out that there were no borders in which and how people live in the cars. Like as you can see from these images, they could be in Europe, in America, in Asia. And since it was the first project that was de designed from the beginning for both the European and American market, it was a very good thing to, to discover that we could we could do it. So we tried to think about people as users, not only as customers, as most of the normal companies do. So, 500 goes L. L, like a loft, a car that can be lived in. And like a loft, it offers a new layout in interior environments with an open environment. We were inspired by Le Corbusier, Ville Savoie, innovative uh, house from the beginning of the, of the century that was built in layers. There was a free floor plan at the base, then a, a window layer that offered uh, illumination and ventilation, and then a functional floor. There was a garden at it that we translated for the 500 up into a wide open sunroof to transform it into a patio. Dealing with light is one of the most, uh, 
most important things about designing an interior environment like cars or automotive. That's why we wanted to create this. We wanted to introduce this concept of the ribbon windows. It's like the window surrounds the passenger, creating a very bright environment and making them feel like they're looking at a real 3D world outside. So the interior concept of the ribbon window was translated in the exterior concept of the floating roof. And it was a main theme for a lot of parts of the components of the car. In the interior, it was translated into the floating objects concept, that's in which only the parts to be used are highlighted. We wanted to give a logic to every component of the car, in terms of ease of approach, simplicity, ergonomy, even humanity. We wanted to give, to reproduce inside the car, everyday movements of people, like sliding a phone, opening a desk, even the illumination of the instrument cluster, like a lamp. So that people could feel like familiar at first sight with, with the object. We also wanted to uh, give the visual uh, ergonomic aspect to, to every single object. Like you can see that the steering wheel is rounded in the external part, but it's squared off in the interior part to better frame the instrument cluster. Here we can see uh, research about other aspects of the car, like the seats that were, we were inspired by airplane seats. So this project allowed us to show once more the importance of the, a material sensory value. In the beginning, we were asked to design a very roomy car, but very compact in size has to be bigger than the B-second size. And still, that resembles the 500 and 600 feeling. They were very tricky conditions because asking for a roomy and compact car at the same time is, is a contradiction, almost. So, we took it as a challenge and we took a cat forward concept again. Maybe uh, enlarging the the space, the livable space, and stealing space from the, from the rigid uh, mechanical parts. So that the final look is a cute and livable car in contact position with uh, the trend the, of, of SUVs that look, we thought they look uh, useless, useless, uh, aggressive. So that's why we called it the anti-SUV car. So in making this trend-setting product, we, we wanted to give an emotional side, an emotional part to the project. And so we reviewed the family album. So you can see on the Fiat product. Fiat is both heart and mind. And it's full of personality, but also clever and full of functionality. So we have the two aspects of Fiat. The Fiat Cinquecento, that is heart, and the European Fiat Panda, that is the mind. And in the family reunion, we soon found who was uh, our mammone. That is, in Italian, it means uh, mama boy. But yeah, it's not, it's not that negative. It's, you know, in Italy, Italy there's this strong tradition about the mother, and so the mammone is the, is, is the boy that everyone loves in, in the family. And it was the Cinquecento. But we wanted to find out, okay, but who is the mama of the Cinquecento? How it was born, the 500 L. It was tricky because we all, we already had a very good product with a very strong feeling and, and character, and we wanted to give some more to it. It's it's not easy to give some something more to a very uh, successful product like Chico We decided to build it on the MPV segment to add the cleverness and functionality aspect of Fiat to the emotional one. So to synthesize everything in a single product. So multi-purpose vehicle, vehicle, but also multi-use vehicle. Here you can see some of the concepts at the 
skinny. We thought about <laughs> surfer aspect, a vintage idea, a home tour. We thought about taking the, the, the car with, with a famous band into a car show to make it look that it was. It could be everything, not only families for Europe, not only a uh, uh, cool car for USA, it, was, like, it could be everything for this aspect. We thought a lot about its functionalities, and finally, we found in this, in this proposal the way, the way to go. So, here you can see other sketches of the evolution of the project. So we wanted to use the positive elements of SUVs to give the feeling of uh, protection to the, to, the, to the inhabitants of the country. And we wanted to find the right, right balance between the greenhouse and the bodywork. So finding the right position of the belt line was a really hard part of the project because we wanted to give this ribbon windows concept. We wanted a lot of visibility, but still people feel protected at the same time. You can feel from the side view that since 500 was going to be four doors, it had, it had to be communicated very strongly. So from the side, from the side impression of the car, you soon can assume that the passengers in the back have the same room as passengers in the front. It's a sort of democratic car. So for Fiat, that is a brand that has a very strong historical component, Designing materials and colors has the same importance as designing the shapes. Our job is based on a continual research of new materials and technologies and also a lot of people's lifestyle to translate new ideas into productive solutions and to find a new material logic for every project. So for the, for the colors and the aspects of 500L, we wanted to make it even more customizable than 500. So we wanted to give it a, a range vintage appealing, but also a sophisticated one, or a contemporary aspect. And you will find that we put all of them in just one cup, so that it can be changing, changing for every every consumer's needs. So the route undertaken from the Cinquecento that for Fiat was a huge step in its image, branding, definition. Now it finds a coherent extension in this multi-use vehicle like 500L. And as I said before, it was a, it was a project that was designed for beginning for both American and European markets, so now I think it establishes a landmark in the world of cars for everyone and everyday use. And with this new tracking version that was designed specifically for, for the USA, we, find, we, we found our answer because now European market want it back <laughs> because they liked it more than the other ones. So we, we are, you know, we did our job well. So, thank you for your attention. Divertite. Uh, uh, Arrivederci. Grazie. <laughs>